I'm Chase. And I'm Timothy. And this is Customer Service. Watching you, the brief second between when I say hello and you trying to figure out what what I'm going to do, what the bit's going to be to (laughs) say hello is really, it's a special (laughs) moment that you'd have to be here to see. It's cool. Uh, Anything, what's going on with you? (sighs) I'm living in the new crib. Shout out Longmont. So cool. Shout out Longmont. (laughs) Longmont is so cool. Let me just tell you what's within like two miles of my house. I'm going to put you on pause right here. You know, it's not going to impress me, but you're going to, but you're prepping it like it's going to. to. And and the thing is that I, I I love this for you because I know that you love it and I, know, I without saying this I, mean, we, I can put together you're gonna be like well, there's an auto zone right next to me and there's <laughs> <laughs> so I know what this is so I'm saying I'm Sorry. saying in the immediate neighborhood r- you cross over onto the main street in Longmont we've got TGI Fridays <laughs> Chick Fil A Lowe's Home Depot's not far a Whole Foods Market is not far. That's just scratching the surface. Everything you can imagine. Everything I formerly drove 45 minutes for in Ohio is right there. I mean, I think that maybe that's why it's special to you. Because the one thing I'll say about where I grew up is none of that. I mean, everything's kind of like far away compared to like, you know, city. Everything's Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes away. But like it was all like that. Like I could get to any of those things you're saying. That wasn't like far from me. Yeah. Um, And and also I want to acknowledge it's partially a bit. I do like, I love chains. It's not a joke, but I also lean into it. I mean, I get it. It's comfortable. I I love it. It's comfortable. It's consistent. It's predictable. You know what you're going to get from it. But also even living in Denver, dude, Closest Whole Foods was a 30-minute drive. Listen, why the two of you ding-dongs ever moved to Denver, I never understood because neither of you are interested in city stuff. No, no. But, I mean, dude, a Whole Foods right down the street, King Super, everything. Everything is really accessible, Mm -hmm. and I love it. Front yard, backyard, you know. All of it's it. It's tight, bro. There's a, there's a bunny living. In, there's like a front In the front yard, there's like a nice little rock thing, and there's a big tree in it. And there's a bunny that lives underneath this foliage. Every day I see him. Well, I can get, there's like 15 of those little hoes in my backyard. Little hoes. I'm going to build them a little shelter. I, Feed them well, out of my hand. Why would you do that? You're like, you're, aren't you going to put a, I'm assuming you're going to put like some kind of garden back there. Yeah. It'll be for the bunny. Yeah, I was going to say they're going to take, they take it all. Yeah, no, I'm fine I don't with know, it. Every single year, my wife puts all that stuff in there yeah. and spends a bunch of time, yeah. one day only, putting a bunch of stuff back there and then letting nature take it away from there. Yeah. And then those, those, just the fattest, like crack addicted squirrels you've ever seen back there just like eat it all up and the, whatever's left is the bunnies. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a little feeding frenzy out there every morning. It's one of those things where, like, we're going to do the backyard. We'll do like proper, like, raised garden beds. We'll find somebody that builds, you know, little wooden ones and those hopefully squirrels don't get to but Mm -hmm. there's something i'm fine with feeding the wildlife i don't don't think you understand have you ever seen a squirrel trying to get into that stuff they look oh yeah they look crazy they like don't have a tail and like are missing an eye oh yeah and and they look you in the eyes they don't care we don't give a fuck we had one of those little green not they're not all green but you know a little wired metal wire thing you put a a hunk of bird feed in do you know what i'm saying like a block of bird feed Mm -hmm. And we had it on our porch in Denver for a day, bro. And we look out there, and there's a squirrel swinging like it's at the state fair. You know what I mean? And that thing's, and he's whipping, and he's just eating that block of feed. I remember this is something that really upset my dad. <laughs> and he would stand at the, he'd make himself uh, instant coffee, you know? Yeah, yeah. And Maxwell House his, Cafe Francais. Yeah, and he'd stand with a robe and a BB gun at the window <laughs> in the kitchen <laughs> and just try to pick him off yeah. from messing with the bird feed. Yeah, yeah. That was a big to do in the backyard. The same, dude. I feel like it's a Midwestern thing. My grandma would be out, out of her mind over these squirrels fucking with her bird feeders. I also still don't understand, like, why do we want the birds to get it, but. In my the, opinion, I like it. I like any any time they're close to the looking. house, you could look at them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, I, like, I don't know, cooler. bro. You ever seen a beautiful blue jay? I'm just not a. I'm not like a bird guy. Sometimes you, can't though, you get them. a good look at them. They're I'm freaky. Not, I'm not getting a good look at them. I don't care. I love. I love to. I want to get right up in them. Look at them. I think that any. Yeah, for me, birds are out. If they, if I don't think I'd notice <laughs> if they stopped existing, I would never even. I don't know what effect that has on the world. Yeah. Probably has some. There's some negative there, yeah, but yeah. but. 
wouldn't affect me. I've, n- I've never noticed a bird. This is sort of like a tree. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's you just, said, I just like never don't look a up. Tree. <laughs> that's not a lie. I've never, I've never gone anywhere. I'm like, well, that's a beautiful tree. Yeah. Ne- I've, that's never crossed You my never mind. will like be walking and look up and be like, fuck, dude, that's, no. that's, a, if you were all the way at the top of that, that's way higher not than even, you not think. Not even literally for one second. Yeah. <laughs> not for one second. <laughs> Unless it's like messing with a power line or something yeah. that might affect my day to day. It's not, yeah. it just doesn't come up. Yeah. I don't think about it for shade. I don't like shade. I've told you, I like being the. I like to get beat down by the Ugh. sun if I'm outside. See, that's another thing about the new house, bro. It's, it's a dark home. We, we get enough the sun in the back. You, the things that you say, it's literally like you wouldn't I, put this on a listing of the house. You would not say no, anything that you're saying. You're like literally across the street. I'm out of Lowe's, <laughs> and, and, then it, no, and the it's, place it's, is dark. It's probably a three minute drive to the Lowe's. A four, a four or five minute drive to the Lowe's. Maybe six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Literally what we're doing is anyone out there, if there's a video and it's Young Thug being we interviewed. We can't find it. We've tried to find it. And I wanted to say it was on Million Dollars a Game. I watched an entire, whatever you sent me that you thought it was, mm-hmm. I watched the whole thing to think like, oh, yep. we just might be missed it. Because it's only like a, it's four seconds. It's somebody, somebody's posing a question to Young Thug and his response starts out with, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's 2005, 2006 Bird, or 2005, 2006 Lil Wayne. Yeah, that's 2007 Lil Wayne. Yeah, we're looking at probably like 2008 Lil Wayne, and he just kind of keeps <laughs> he's, going. He's not sure what the year is, and it could be any of 10 years, but he goes individually through the years, and every single time he considers, like, could, could yeah. be 2009 Lil Wayne. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's just, but if you if you know where that interview happened. Yeah, if anyone's got it, please. please. We've been I trying to see it. it again. I need I it. I remember watching it at the, at the store when yeah. we were yeah. fulfilling it, but I can't. I don't remember because we used to say it constantly. Anytime someone stuttered. It was like 2008 yeah. Wayne, yeah. 2000, yeah, 2007 Wayne. Love it. Well, I'm glad I'm glad this is – I'm glad you love it. Yeah, I'm that's, all settled in. I like it. Commute, the commute has been great too. I'm not going to lie. I got stopped by a couple trains this week, but I think this morning I found the time to leave to beat the trains. Good, dude. I, I like trains, it. There's trains. There's a Lowe's. It's dark. Bro, it's sick. Wow. It's sick. We could have just dug you a hole. <laughs> you know that I would like that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Partially furnished. Well, what's going on at the store? Is there anything cool? We had a big Frism Works order that came and went yep, pretty big much. Big Frism Works restock and then capital. summer. Yeah, Capital is coming. At the end of this week, today. we have not announced this yet. So if you're listening to this and you could still hear this before it happens, Friday will be the drop for the uh, tour oh, ultra yeah, low Hoka, in, yep. in like triple white. Mm-hmm. That one also I'm assuming sell right out. So yep. if you're trying to be on it, on it, maybe you hit us up on discord and we'll make sure we can uh, hold a little size for you or something. Yep. Yep. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're listening to this on Thursday, again, Timothy and I are trying to do the episodes <coughs> that he and I record on ideally a Tuesday, yep. Wednesday, you know, so that it's a little more I'm trying to sneak little bits topical. In there yeah. And just, yeah. Let people know. But yeah. So tour is coming Friday. You just sent me the invoice for capital. We got a lot of century denim. Mm-hmm. I know people have been in the U S keen for those type ones that are century denim. You know, it releases in Japan first and, yeah. but yeah, it's going to be sick. So I'm going to, I'm excited to try on one of those kits. Yeah. You're it's been good. F- dude. You're going to get a full kit. Yeah, Maybe. What would stop you? Everything, <laughs> everything. <laughs> the games that I play with myself. He, there's, here's what he's gonna do. He's gonna. He's been talking about it f- for probably two weeks now. Like when that comes in, I'm I'm getting. Well, I'm getting no, 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 no. Not not the Century denim. When that Boro jacket comes, that black that Boro with don't the don't act like you didn't do the Century denim. Too. I did say you, you've Century done both denim. of this. You flip flop. Then as soon as it gets here, he'll find some little tiny thing of some reason that doesn't yeah, work. And yeah, it'll be a whole thing. We'll see though. I'm it's excited. A game. It's a, it's a game I play. It's a game I play. I mean, to be fair, I play a lot of the similar games mm-hmm. of like, you know. over, it's just like, I always say that like whenever I'm doing stuff with like, especially like guitars and pedals and shit, the thing that ruins it is when I buy it. It's ruined at that point. Uh, it's the research. I just want to uh-huh. do the research. Uh-huh. And, I wanna, like, and it's the anticipation of being like, if I had this thing, this is what would change. And you mm-hmm. know what I mean? This is how I would feel every morning. Knowing and if I, I, had if this I sell thing. off all the pedals and rebuy new things and reset them up, that gives me a whole evening that I'm so excited for to like to rewire it yep, 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 yep. and yeah, do the whole thing. You know what, dude? You saying that, I think that that would be the most fun task slash job is setting up a pedal board. I have no interest it's in really, playing the machine. It's, it's playing very them. satisfying. But, well, and the, the nice thing is too because i've always wanted i've really wanted to like build guitars because Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. not i mean it's very complicated but you can buy the parts and then just kind of freak it you know what i mean and i think that would be so fun to just do the whole build out of the thing sure sure um but i'm not like i'm not like that i know that there's like real like 
I don't want to say science that goes into it, but like, you know what I mean? You got to really, oh, there's definitely a level of precision. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not as loose as like foil down before you put the, the fucking pickups in and shit. I don't know. Interesting. Do I don't and know, then, know yeah, what that's doing. I just know they yeah. got to go in there. And there's a, but there is rationale. We just don't I'm know. I'm sure. And I'm sure that there's a one that's, I'm sure that there's a foil that's more expensive than the others that I would need uh-huh. or convince myself I need. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, and the thing is too, once I knew how to do it, because then I'm now I'm hot rodding guitars. Yeah. I can't get I can't we can't add this many. I can't I, there can't be this many levels to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of control as it is now. Yeah. And again, you're just playing covers of Margaritaville, so it's like Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Um Okay, should we get into it? Well, actually, another thing. Oh, you got something? Um, you need. I, I'm not going to spoil the special for you, but the new John Early special came out. I know. I, I, it's really funny. And now, and now uh, this is why I hate sometimes when I when I have information where I was like, I don't know that Chase has seen it. I know that it's out, and mm. I said it to you the other day. And I'm like, I don't want to say it because he's going to be able to see it faster. Than I instantly I went home and watched it. We watched yeah. it last night eating dinner. And yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I think it's really funny. I think I respect him for being his whole ass self and just being like, this is exactly what I'm fucking doing. And and yeah. and you'll see what i mean but i do want to say he throws actual shots at molly boz in a way that you wouldn't believe well i know that he has strong opinions from other podcasts that i've listened because i've listened to him on several other podcasts now and he has strong opinions about bon appetit and stuff i mean yeah i i I don't need to go further than it i want we'll talk about it after but it's like it's insane. It blew my mind. Look, we've had members of it on the podcast, but I got to say there was there was a time before COVID and then obviously there's the there is a AC for them. There's there's a, a before COVID and after COVID for them. <laughs> say, but air um, conditioning, bro. But the but the, but the before COVID, that was like that I watched that like people watch watched friends. Oh, I yeah. knew yeah. Everything about everybody. You know I, what w- I mean? I would wake we up on Sunday it. mornings, turn on YouTube on yeah. my PlayStation, and just sit and watch all of them, just whatever came up. Here's here's the thing for me with this kind of stuff. And like the way something will connect with me is I want it to be brightly lit. I want it to be like a clean space. Mm-hmm. Pretty people, but it's best if they're like pretty but interesting. If it's more of that mm-hmm, look, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which they had, they had it because they were like normal people. Yeah, it's my dream. Yeah, normal, normal hot people, so much hotter than hot, hot people. Famous. Does that yeah, make yeah, sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, like, I got you. Kim Kardashian's not like a real person. Do no, I mean, like no. she, she is, and and I love her. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. But it's but like you know, what I'm saying like that's yeah, not. No, I got that's, you. Like, that's a different thing. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you could even. Like what well, we could we talked about Rachel McAdams how we all have a crush on her. Uh-huh. I, I think everyone does. Guy, girl, the ages. She spans everyone. Agree. Yeah, we all agree she should be our president. Yes. In fact, that's a good movie. Nobody steal that. <laughs> yeah. Rachel McAdams, small town woman, runs for president, wins. Yeah. People are unsure. Oh God, how could she balance uh-huh, the budget? Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, she's like, "Well, she was a stay-at-home mom. She's balanced a budget before." Yeah. And then she farts fucking ripping at, at the job, yeah, and everyone yeah, loves yeah, it. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a feel-good movie. Love it. You know, I would watch. Call me. <laughs> I've never written a script. The, the I anyway. I think that sometimes when you see like regular people, like this is what I like about YouTube, and like, uh, well, YouTube is really the main place, but even Instagram, like influencer yeah. stuff, the more like normal they are. That's that's the key. Yeah. Now it seems like something I could meet on the street. Yeah, like we could be buddies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I'm t- now these look like people that go to parties that I would go to. Maybe you went to high school with them. You know what I mean? Bingo. So it it just feels you just like them even more. But yeah. I knew everything about these people. But at yeah. the same time, like yeah, now that they've gone out and made like career moves based around mm-hmm. these like almost characters. Yeah. Now I have strong opinions because yeah. now I'm allowed because you've entered true pop culture. Yeah. So now we get to have strong opinions. So knowing that now and you know i've got some opinions i cannot oh. wait to to see that yeah i lo- john early you got to come on the pod i feel like we got a lot of things that we could talk about that y'all that, that we would be this would be a good guest for us dude again if anybody hasn't watched on netflix <clears throat> there's the show called the characters tim robinson yeah. has a 30 minute segment john early segment is both of their segments are something i revisit once a month and i just think it's so fucking funny he does that one bit where he's standing in the rain Oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's so funny. Is this his first special? I the think it's his first special. special. He, he obviously has an hour like, or something. I don't know. I'm not it's, sure. it's it's an hour. It's an hour. I no, would I mean, say I, I, like he had like a Comedy Central hour or something. I didn't know. Oh, I, oh. I don't know. Oh, maybe I don't know. But no, I think this is like, you know, it's on HBO. Full full ass situation. Did it in Brooklyn. Cool. 
it's well, sick. I've only heard good things, so yeah, it's it, funny. It'll, it was it'll, really it'll, funny. I'm gonna be on it this week. Hey, real fast, you you got my mind spinning. You were saying, you know, talking about famous people, but yeah. any famous people from where you're from? You know what I mean? Anybody really make it from where I'm from? And we can Je- we can Jenna say, Fisher is from oh, my hometown, from the office. She's from Fort Wayne. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. I don't think we've got a ton. Um, oh, Bill Blass, famous. Uh, oh, you don't know me. He's a famous yeah. fashion designer from a long time ago. Oh, cool. He's from Fort Wayne. Um, I'm, I know I'm missing people, but I, I, it's not a it's not a ton. Yeah. It's not we a ton. have. Uh, do, would you? What about this? You have a quick question. Wait, no, no. no. You tell me. Do you have? Well, there's, do you have just, there's just a couple people. We have the uh, head coach, formerly of the Ohio State football team, uh, Urban Meyer. He is from Ashtabula. And there was a baseball coach. I believe he coached the Reds. His first name is Mark. Can't remember his last name. He was from Ashtabula. Uh, then a kid I went to high school with named Sean. I think he's becoming an actor. He may have gotten something by now. So he's from Ashtabula. The list is not strong from where I'm from, but we got Shelly Long from Cheers. Right? From Cheers? <laughs> Shan loves yeah. Cheers. We got... You don't fuck with it? i never seen it. You might like it. It's good. Plus, then you can watch Frasier after, which I love. Yeah. The colors aren't going to do it for me. It's too old. You got to just get over that. Because once you're it, once you're like past like the first few episodes, you just kind of forget. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like when you watch Seinfeld. I know you don't do that. But like you just like get a point where it's like, oh, I don't think about it being old there's, anymore. There's also a big aspect of it. I feel like I missed out. And I feel, you know what I mean? I feel like these things that you're, these are institutions in the comedy show world. And I don't know anything about them. And it's, you know, I like friends though. I do like friends. Okay, let's do this. Let's do two things. I got, I got a good idea that you made me think of. Let's look up people. Oh my God, mine is good. Oh my God. No, 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 it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's not good. We're going to look up famous people that were born on your birthday. Okay, cool. Mine, the only one I knew of for sure, Kendall Jenner. Yeah, cool. Great. Hold on. Let's. So I was born November 3rd. Okay. So I'm a Scorpio. If anyone wants to look into that, I don't he's, know what it means. He's at a all. Scorpio to a T. I know nothing about it. I just know that he's he is a Scorpio to a T. Okay, let's see here. What the, well, you, this should be way easier than it is. Man, mine's not good. Well, I mean, Kendall Jenner is good. You, you saying there were bad people born on your birthday? No, I mean, it's like there's nobody. No real I don't big know who names. any of these people are. Yeah. Admittedly, I don't know any any famous person. You don't have any on yours? Okay, not, that I'm, not that I'm familiar with. You want to type it in? Yeah, I'm going to. Oh, this one's good, actually. I got a good one. Uh, Anna Wintour was born on my birthday. So this makes sense. Me, Anna, and Kendall at a party, we'd get along. Oh, my God. Yeah, We'd bro. get along great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Remind me of yours again. December, December 14th. December 14th. December 14th. I want it to be something weird. It's going to be okay. fucking Weird Al or something. I hate him. <laughs> Wait, why do you hate Weird Al? I just don't. I hate it. I hate mu- I hate novelty music. Nah, bro. We. I just think that you're too young to like for Weird Al to have hit for you because that's like a... That's, he's a big deal. It makes me uncomfortable in the same way the idea of watching Napoleon Dynamite makes me uncomfortable. Uh, it's different, but it's but the only way you'd really know that is by like uh, by like being younger. I was gonna and say see, having experienced it. In when that. we when when some of those songs came out when we were younger, we were like, "Holy shit, <laughs> this is the funniest thing we've ever seen." Cliff Williams, he's a rock music. I don't even know who that is. Oh, Jane Birkin, that's good. Birkenbag? Yeah. Tight. That's pretty good. Who out there is buying me one? <laughs> I'd love to see you carry. I'll buy you. I'll, I'll, I'll come out of pocket. I'll buy you one, but you have to use it every day. Oh, I, you know I will. I'll put McDonald's in there. Vanessa Hudgens, she's cool. You, you don't got a lot, bro. It's yeah. not. It's not. I'm a Sagittarius. It's not sweet baby. for you on on a, on a December 14th. What is that? What does that make you? A what? Sagittarius. Hmm. I ask that like I every time that someone says that I'm like, well, what is that? It's like I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. Those are pretty much all of them. There's a lot of like kids, but I don't know what they did that were that made them famous. I'm taking too long on this. Yeah, famous I, till you're 18. But I just want there to be like one other good. I was really hoping there was gonna be a freaky one. Yeah. Like Charles Manson. I was just gonna be. say you could have been <laughs> born on Charles Manson's birthday. Me. Yeah, why not? You think he might have Scorpio energy? He might have some Scorpio energy. He is knows a, how to, he is knows a, how to lead a group of people. Well, unless the government did it. Well, we'll see about that. Okay. 
let's get into it. That didn't that didn't do anything fun like I wanted it to. Here, well, here's this. We'll just start with. I'm just do them in a row. Uh, here's a quick one. What is your favorite Capital bandana in your collection, or favorite that you've ever seen? Yeah, mine is the brown. Uh, what's it called? Not Shunga. It might be Shunga. Uh, for Shiki or it's it's the sex one. It's all the oh, yeah, sex yeah, yeah, positions yeah. one with like the yep. the translations. But and that's just the one that's just brown and white. Exactly. And the yeah. reason being is I don't think I've seen a brown. Not that we've carried. There was that one. It's like I had a thing in college too. I liked brown lighters. I think the color brown is like uh, you just don't Why find was that, that a thing? shit. I thought about that the other day. My buddy had one, and he was the like, "Brown we can't lighter lose thing." It. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Was they I were just like think good you luck? Just couldn't find them. Yeah, I always thought they were good luck because they were hard to find. I was, but I, it's I always, the brown capital bandana. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I, I I really always loved that floral one with the little skulls in it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which they hadn't done in eons, and they did pretty recently. I think yeah, we got them available right sacks, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really liked that one. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that were the fruit shunga is also dope. It's got mm-hmm. peaches, apricots, and shit like that on it. But mm-hmm. it's the banana is a penis Bear. motif. <laughs> penis motif. I love this <laughs> saying the clinical name penis. of it and saying motif. <laughs> um, I can't remember. I feel like there were some other ones. I'm trying to think there. Uh, I feel like there was some really like older ones that I had that were really great, but I'm not like nothing. I have one that just had like just skulls on it. It was mm-hmm. like, they were like bigger mm-hmm. and it was um, like a green color. Interesting. That one was cool. I, I'm sure that's around somewhere. I think, I think Gia has it on one of her oh, like stuffed dogs. Do you still have that one framed? The OG or, orange. We, mm. It's red technically, but it's orange, you know? Yeah. It's the, the, Ica, the, the yeah. You know, uh, fucking pissed off, fucking it. pissed off cat. Yep, yeah. I got, I still have that one yeah. framed. And I feel like, I man, I really was thinking there was some more like rare ones. I mean, I do have one that just had like the old school Capital logo on it. Um, yeah, I have that one somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, but it was just a black one. It just had the old Capital logo cool. on it. So that, cool. was, that one's pretty cool, just because I think it's actually like prior to them really. Using I have it. this one today. I have the oh, motherfucking there you go. pissed off orange one right now. Look at that. That's the best color of it too. I think. love the, it. Love it. And I've washed one. this out a bunch. And mm-hmm. that's the thing with all of those. Like whenever I got those bandanas, I just put them directly in the wash and dry because like they get so nice once they're like, yeah, yeah. You need to be careful after you do it the first time. But like if you do it in a, in a delicate load, it's the, they're they get so nice with wear. Yeah, uh, with everything that I own, I like it more after you oh, had it and washed. I it. I know what my I know the one I was trying to think of that I just realized they had the they had one where it was like. Like a pair of capital jeans and it looked like the Levi's logo of the two horses trying to pull the jeans oh, apart. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it was cat. It was like, they just freaked it and it uh-huh. looked like capital. That's, I don't know where that one is either, but it's purple and it's really, it, that yeah, one's that's really sick. cool. That's I feel like, I feel like they can't do that. They don't, I've noticed they don't do that anymore. It used to be like a thing they would do. Well, Levi's, I they Levi's goes me. after people. Yeah, you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah. Who, who was the brand that, Oh, I don't know. Every Japanese brand that you can think of, I think, has been sued by Levi's at some point. I don't want to say it because I don't want to get the brand wrong, but one of these brands got sued by Levi's for the red tab. So they either put the red tab on the inside of the pocket or they kept it on the outside. And instead of whatever the thing, it just said legal in Levi's font. Yeah, I know what the brand is, and I don't know if we're allowed to say it or not. But but yeah, I mean, it was was actually just like it was the placement of the tag. It wasn't even red. It was, oh, just the, it was the placement. Just can't have it, it in was that like the little placement top left. The sty- yeah, but there was some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to like pull it. Huh. Yeah, they, we we had to like slice some of them off and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. cool. You can probably put it together. Um, okay, this is one. Oh, we had. Yeah, I know you're right. Yep. This is one that I think that it's 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 time we address because it's come up Let's in a couple it. different ways, and I think we both have strong feelings on this, and it's going to be controversial, but <laughs> is what it is. And that's, and I think that you know where we're going to go with this when I start to say the question, even though it probably isn't answering the direct question, which is, does your size charts go off general rubric or Mm. does every garment have a specific measurement? So let's get into it. I mean, here's the issue. People don't like that we don't post measurements. Yeah. We never we've, we've have. Heard, we've always heard it. Like, yeah. I don't want people to think that we just are living no, no, in no, some no. space this, where we this don't is know a that people hate choice, it. But, yeah. and, and it was something that we made at – we we talked about it in the beginning, and I gave some valid reasons on why I thought it does as much bad as it does good. Mm-hmm. I understand why people want them. And yeah. there are some people that uh, – likely a lot of the people that are getting in touch about very specific measurements probably do know how to look at measurements. Sure. But – it's kind of like math, bro. Like it's like it's a it's like a you have to know how to read it correctly. You know what I yeah. mean? Like because my my major concern is as we grew and got more and more brands, especially if you think about just use capital as the example since it's fresh on our brains. That does not go off traditional me- measurements. Like no. 
if you try to measure a ring coat, number one, I'm not even sure how you would no, measure it. it. And it's and even the, the measurement that you're giving it isn't accurate. You know what I mean? So if you're gonna look at it and go, yeah, it's got a pit oh, to pit is fifty eight. You're it's like, well, yeah, but that does fit a size medium. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the intended fit. Yeah, yeah. And the way it's gonna lay on you, you're never gonna. That's not. But what it, what's gonna do for either the layman or someone that just doesn't know the measure or like doesn't know the yeah. garment, you're gonna take a single look at it and go. Fuck, I no, can't. It's not for me. me. It's way too big. Yeah, and it even though that's even really trying. not the case. Yeah. So the reason we always left them off was one of the reasons because there's one of so the many. But one of the reasons really, or I guess the main one for me is that I would rather we have very good customer service. Yep. We completely stand by it. You will get in touch with someone and you will get in touch with them fast. We will get you measurements if that's what you want. And we just to be clear. To all you who do it to us, God bless you. But like all those, the guys over there are taking measurements of thigh, two inches down from where the thigh measurement is, knee, top knee, below knee, uh, shin. Um, I mean, you name it. If any made up measurement that you can think mm-hmm. of, we've been asked for, and we gladly do it every single time without complaint because mm-hmm. that is sort of the sacrifice we make. That's the I, agreement. I, I we promise made. you, yeah. we will take any crazy ass measurement you throw at us. And I've measured belt loops before, for Christ's sake. So you 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 come up with something, we'll, we'll take care of it. Mm-hmm. That being said. I just feel like on the whole, people don't know how to interpret them. And I would much rather give them some feedback because a lot of the times you can be like, listen, it's called a 36. It's not going to measure a 36. And that might be easy to interpret. But here's the thing. Because of the way the rise hits or the way this yeah. works or, you know what I mean? Like it's, you're, you are going to want to go with X or Y, Z size. You know what yep, I mean? Yep, 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 so yep. it's really just, we want to do the best job and pu- just putting measurements on there as a dismissive way so that we don't get emails is I think the lazier version of things. Yep. And it's, and even though I think the people are like, well, they just don't want to take measurements. I'll take measurements, but here's the other big problem. Mm-hmm. Piece to piece, size to size, those things measure differently. These are small yep. handmade things. And people might say, oh, you know, we don't like China manufacturing or blah, blah, blah. That's precision. That's going to be the same thing every single time. Yep. This is not. This is handmade. There are human errors. There are just differences in, like, where the fabric was cut. Exactly, There are yeah. a lot of things that will change a pit to pit by, like, half an inch or something yep. piece to piece, even though you would assume it's all mm-hmm. the same. It but it's not. Yeah. So I'd rather be measuring you the one that's going to go in the box and come to yeah, you 100%. because it's just more accurate. I was just going to say more often. Like more often than not, than you think, it's hey, can you? Okay, we're on the phone with the guy. Okay, cool. This works. Can I have that one? And we'll yeah. walk it over and we'll ship that that one yeah. that we measured because, like you said, the measurements change, and then all that does is it gives the agency for someone to buy something whether they really truly intend to keep it or not, or it's on sale, they use a discount. And then for them to be like, well, actually canoe club, yeah. your size chart was off by a quarter of an inch. And <laughs> I wouldn't have bought this jacket sure. if I knew that it was 24.75. Well, and, and it's like, so oh, frequently, like if you think of like a thigh measurement, the, the first question I have the guys ask is what does that mean to you? Yeah. Because I've been told, a million. I know the way that I was taught in school to do that measurement, yeah. but I'm not sure that that's what everyone else is using it on. So it's like, and if you move down a quarter of an inch on that measurement, the measurement changes yep. by, by a dramatic amount. And again, like you're saying, I mean, even just to get into the weeds on that, it's like, yeah, so I, I take the measurement from here, you take it from here, you interpret my measurement as, as what you thought it was mm-hmm, going to be, mm-hmm. and now we have an issue with a return or some problem because... And you think the item isn't going to fit because, because we don't you're misrepresent misinterpreting. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it's like, are you setting the garment down flat on the table and measuring it? Are you setting it, pulling it, and let it fall back? Normally, like, all of these things will change it by a quarter of an inch at least. Yeah. And these are... and. It's just it's just silliness. We th- th- here's the thing. One of the things at Canoe Club is it's always like, how do we put the human back into something? Yeah. And I never want to avoid. I, I I very seldomly want to avoid a customer service issue because it would just make things easier. Um, because I don't think that's the way to do it. I yeah. think that the the God's honest truth with this is this is a specific. These are specific questions. Um, they aren't mathematical. And that's just what it is. Yeah. It's how are you measuring? Let me talk to you about this. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. how are you wanting it to fit? What size do you normally wear? Mm-hmm. I'll try it on for you. We'll send pictures. Here's the thing. You can get in touch with us on chat almost all the time. You can email us. Yep. It'll be responded to within, fuck, what, 15 out, 12 hours and max. I mean, it's max, not, it's not yeah, much. Yeah. And you can hit us up on Instagram. You can hit us up on Discord. You can, you can call text the store. us. You can call us. You have endless ways to get in touch and we will always be like yeah let i've never turned some away i mean outside of maybe like peak hours on a black friday saying let me call you back you know what i mean we'll, we'll, we got you you know what i mean also another thing i'd like to note for all the guys out there that are like super neurotic about this 
maybe you've never had somebody tell you this. You are w- one of the four major sizes. It's either Absolutely. either you yeah. can wear a medium and it's a little snug on you or you wear a large, but you're not so unique that you don't fit into these. And now obviously there are edge cases where somebody's really small sure, or sure, someone sure, might sure, be larger. Sure. I'm not saying but, it's but never largely the case, what but. I'm saying is like sometimes people are like, ugh, I couldn't make a three or a four, four work on me in Orslo. And it's like, well, you were just looking for something you're never going to find. Yeah. Well, that or like that's just not the right fit for you. It doesn't have sure. anything to do with whether it fit or not. Here's the thing. I have, the, I have a pretty strong opinion on this. I don't think any clothes fit perfect right away. And no. if they do fit perfect right away, the second you wash it, you're fucked. Yeah, you know you're what I mean? Then. Yeah. Like it, it's like because it's going to change. And that's the thing. I think you have to assume, especially with predominantly like cotton, wool, natural fiber garments, they are going to form to you. They mm-hmm. are going to wash and wear. They're going to stretch ways. as you wear. Yeah. Like it's just not going to be perfect on you. I think what you have to look at is I'm either a guy who fits stuff snug because mm-hmm. that makes me feel comfortable or I, and, and I'm going to assume it's going to loosen up and do, do its mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. I'm either that guy or I'm the guy who's going to size up and just make it, and I'll make it work. Either go have it tailored for Christ's sake, just go have your clothes tailored by a little bit. Nothing's too long. You just go take it over to a tailor 10 bucks later, it fits you perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just fall in love with the fabric or like a certain version of the cut or something like that and Some then make it work for it, you. Yeah, yeah. But like I was so rarely put on clothes and think, Oh God, this is perfect for me. No, no, no. I feel like I have to like put them on and go, I love the piece so much. I'm going to figure out how to make it work and then I'll make it work. And then over time it starts to fit a little bit better. 100%. It just, you just, I think, like, Oh, I like it with this cut of pants or I like it. I actually like wearing exactly. this with these shorts or yeah. you're like, okay, cool. And, but there, everybody has items that are not going to work for every item in your wardrobe. Yeah. And, and again, Dude, I got, it, I got slim pants or like, you know, like tapered yeah, sure. pants and I got big loose pants yeah. and I've got big loose jackets and yep. tighter, like just have the, you might want to change that proportion or silhouette now mm-hmm, and then. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, like you're saying, like you did not fit a three or a four unless you just got completely the wrong size. I mean, yeah. you need a five or you need a two. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. it, it really comes down to like, you didn't like the, you didn't like the style of that garment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because otherwise one of the two things fit you. You're Like I said, it really comes down to there's two buckets. Either you it like it to fit things you. a little snug or you like things to fit a little looser. Yeah, yeah. And then you just pick one and you kind of work around yep. it. And if neither of those work, the item isn't for you and you exactly. need to move just, on. You're just having more of a problem with the cut of the overall yeah. garment, which is perfectly okay. So too. Just, you know but, what I mean? But then like, just do something different. But fussing around trying to get things to be perfectly accurate, no. this is ready to wear product. It isn't going to be perfect on you. Get it, wear it for a week, have it tailored from there if you need it to. I'd say on the whole, sizing up is better than sizing yeah. down unless you unless you really are confident about something. And like I said, I'm not telling you we won't take measurements. We take measurements. No, we're more That's than a happy huge to do part it. of our day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But like it, it's just a function of you really need to like not everyone's going to have the same information. Mm-hmm. So we're not doing a good job if I just throw mm-hmm. measurements up there and say that's that's where they are. And also with all the different communities I exist in on the internet, the amount of times that I hear, oh, interesting, this store has this garment listed for this measurement pit to pit. But if you go to this company's website, they've got yeah. it listed at a whole inch difference in the pit. And it's like, there we go. Prime example. It's like, who's right? Neither. Here's the deal. It's, it's Are you some... shop, if you're shopping at fucking Canoe Club, you give us a call. We're going to tell you the advice like a friend would tell you and yeah. be like, yo, listen, I normally wear a three. I sized up to a four. This exactly. Because yep. this is how I want it to fit. I think it feels and looks better that way. Yeah. That's the, that's the sizing advice you should be out there looking for at this yeah. point. Fuck measurements. They're not going to give, they're not going to give you accurate. Now I think sometimes it's helpful to be like, okay, I don't know the size scale on like mm-hmm. one, two, New three, brand. four, five or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a new brand I've never tried before, and I don't mm-hmm. know how their stuff's really fitting. You know what I mean? Number one, we have a great return policy, so chill. Yep. Number two, the other thing is it's like I, I can see like taking a glance and going, okay, I think I think I get approximately how this is running. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But for every brand that's like that, there's going to be the brands like Capital or Marnie or stuff that where it's like uh, the sleeve length is really long. It's supposed to be long. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. that. Like it's not. If you, if you, if that's turning you off, then you're with, then this that, is the wrong thing for yeah. you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, I can tell you that if you contact me, I can I can be very direct and open yep. and honest. And yep. I've get, I've given and you know this. I've given you guys full license to say what you mean on there. You yeah. know what I mean? Say what you think is best as a human being because mm-hmm. that's what I think people are really looking for at the end of the day. Totally. And that's why the measurements feel so robotic and just like misleading at the end of the Exactly. Day. So no, robotics are a good word for it. Like, no, no, this is here. So now you don't need to contact us. You don't yeah. need to be in touch. You have everything well, you no, need. All you're and- doing is adding another fuck- more information into the mix where you got to check our site, another site, the brand mm-hmm. site, who's right, I don't know. You know what I mean? And it's you're just ultimately never satisfied by it. 
You're never actually given, again, the, the whole point is you're not given the actual information. Yeah. You think you are, you get the garment, it, you misinterpreted it, or sure. again, it's a small maker. The one that the me- they measured in store when they were taking photos, the other one sitting in a warehouse was the one that measured half an inch more in the shoulders or something. And it's just like, yeah, just talk to a person. Just I just call think us. that also like making the assumption, like most people aren't going to know that if the rise is changing, where the where waist gonna, is yeah. different for yeah. you. You know what I mean? Like if it's a high rise, I might be an X waist. If it's a low rise, I might be an X. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So it, it changes. So it's just really better to just be in touch. Mm-hmm. We will be honest with you. We will be direct. We will be fast. You know what I mean? We have that commitment. Easy. Um, and that's why we don't do it. So, and people will argue and still say, well, I still think, and that's fine. But like, we, we've been firm on this for yeah. seven years and I just think it's the better way. Yeah. We don't have a, we don't have a, a big return percentage and I have to attribute some of it to the fact that like you're talking to a person. Yeah. 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 You're dealing with real people when we talk yeah. about stuff. All right. So let's get off that, off the sizing soapbox. It's one of those things where it's like, it's weirdly like it's been like this like passion thing for us for a long time, yeah, of, like, uh, but it's been hard to like express properly. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, I'm not trying to diminish. I understand what you want. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, I'll never give that to you. Cause mm-hmm. obviously we will. It's just, I want to make sure it's understood that like from a brand ethos that we have a very specific reason why we're choosing to um, make the decisions yeah. we make. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. How has Canoe Club evolved since it started and where do you see it in five years? Wow. Interesting. It's I kind mean, of a big question. I mean, so I maybe mentioned it on the pod. I technically was the first customer of Canoe Club. Mm-hmm. I was the first person to spend money in open hours. You go back and look at like the first the literal actual first transaction. Like, transaction. There was a test and then there was you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think you can look at it in a couple ways. One, our online has grown. So right now at, it's kind of like online in store has a similar vibe, but it's also different. You know, the Boulder customer is served in X way and the online customer is, is slightly different kind of, but, uh, I mean, I don't know. What would you say? I feel like it started out very workwear heavy, the sort of, you know, the, you know, the name of the well, brands th- think I mean, 2014, you know what I the, mean? Like the, the answer is it's changed exponentially. And the answer is it's going to change exponentially. Yeah. Like I, we, we say a lot. I mean, this is a common thing, but you never want to look back in five years. You should be kind of embarrassed of your work mm-hmm. every year. You should yeah. look back and go, oh, my God, because oh, God, you're, we... you're constantly evolving and getting yeah. better. Yeah. Um, so if, if you look back and you're like, yeah, it looks pretty much like we did when we opened, I'd be like, mm. ah, it's not a good business model, in my opinion. Um because I think what makes stores interesting, especially our stores, is how they evolve. Mm-hmm. That's why you want to pay attention. You want to see I – mean, and it's also like – you know, I've, I'm sure we've said it on the podcast before. It, I do not understand if you don't like change, why would you get involved in fashion? Mm-hmm. Like fashion by its definition is change. You know what I mean? That's what's exciting about it. Every single season, there's new trends, there's new brands, there's brands taking different directions, there's us taking different like approaches, different stylings, different, and you have to be a little bit open to that to be good at this job. I think. I think that when stores get closed off or they think they've got some like thing figured out, that's when things start falling apart because the customer is continuing to evolve. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like, so, so why you have to as well? Um, So. The way it's evolved is, yeah, it started out a little bit more workwear heavy. I mean, that's what was popular at the time. Sure. So, you know, it was a little bit like, you know, more of that like, you know, like that lumberjack kind of, you yeah, know, workwear. Yeah. There was a lot of, of waxed materials in the sure. shop. There was a, a lot of It was also just like what was denim. available in the market. For sure, I mean? like for that, sure. That's what it's was changed. Popping. It's yeah. changed since 2017. And like slow, I mean, so, so you can look at like the change – I think there's two ways to look at the change. There's looking at the change in the buy, which I should I think should be an assumed change because mm-hmm. um, you evolve and you get better mm-hmm. and you get different data. You, yeah. You're, also, for the record, you're, you know you're the head buyer and your taste change. What sure. you're interested in is, is going to change, and that is ultimately going to affect. Obviously, you buy for the customer and you buy for the community, but you know you're interested in. At shit. the end of the day, the customer's taste level changes, and it's my what I try to do is slowly nudge them in the direction where I think things are going because that's where our most advanced customer is going. And that's where the middle of the road customer, that guy that's maybe not paying as much attention to trends Mm -hmm. is going to be going shortly. And that's where I think sometimes the, the guy lagging a bit on trends, um, 
is going to go even so. So it's like it's like you're trying to like feed each of the that that kind of like bell curve of mm -hmm. customers. Yeah, and you have to do it slowly but surely, and it has to be a trend I've isolated way ahead of time. And then slowly introduced into the, you know, and also isolate like when brands are capitalizing on that trend and when they're not, because sometimes they're choosing to not yeah. like, take an entirely different direction. Mm -hmm. And you just have to like, I think that the customer really informs you of most of it, of like what they want. And the rest of it's just like, there's no excuse for bad buying, in my opinion. Um, you have data, you should know your customer, you should know them intimately in ways that like they're like your friend and you can kind of see yeah. what they're thinking is popping, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like certainly in this, in this industry, you get no shortage of advice from people say, and customers. Opinions so, are yeah. abundant. Everyone's a buyer. Um, and like the thing is too, that I think that everyone thinks they're a buyer or could do buying or like romanticizes it. And I have no idea why, because buying is not what I would describe as fun. The buying portion is basically Excel sheets, budgeting, finance, blah, 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 blah. Boring, and then boring, on top boring. of all of that, you're like, if this turfs out, that's money spent. All you're doing like, is trying to be you're trying to make the least amount of mistakes as possible, but mm -hmm. you never get 100% right. Uh, getting 100% right would also mean you're wrong. Yeah. Like you have to be okay with the job is basically taking L's. Like yeah. if you if you if it did really well, you underbought. If yeah. it did poorly, you had made, a wrong, made, had the wrong perspective. Yeah, the wrong perspective. Yeah, yeah. Some, some, something you was were wrong. Maybe too early, you know I mean? too late, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. So you're really trying to like find some like middle ground all the time of not being a hundred percent right. And like a lot, like you said, like uh, abundant or uh, opinions are abundant. Um, yeah. There's definitely times where customers have said, "Hey, you should bring this brand in." Frism works perfect example. Wasn't the our, right time. Our boys, you know I mean? Spaceman and Discord, yeah. and and Dean, who's in the Discord, like our buddy. Uh, well, they're more of an example of like right time. But like that's a brand I've, I've that's been on my periphery for a mm -hmm, long time. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen it places. Yep. I've seen it on Instagram or whatever it is. I've I've had people be like, "Oh, you should check out this one brand." Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's stuff you'll hear about, and it's more or less like going. If I'm thinking about my bell curve, is it the am I hitting at the right time? Yeah. You know what I mean. Am, am I choosing the right time? Is the brand ready, or, did, or do they have the ability to do it? You yeah. know what I mean. So like, there's so many factors that I don't think people think about. I think it's just like, oh, you go to a big event and you look through all oh, these different so racks and you choose and what you, you get want. To play like, dress up and no, no, some some places show up, some some places don't, some places. I mean, you also have to remember they're trying to sell, so you get pushed. Yeah, you get pushed and pushed and pushed. Or sometimes you get bad information from them saying like, "This is gonna, this is selling out everywhere we get it," and then you get it and you're like, "It didn't do that for me." That's weird. Yeah, you know what I mean, like so, <laughs> it's really it's difficult. But like when people ask me like why or like to explain, I don't know how to. Everything's just sort of gut. Yeah, and then and then it, with 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 a hundred different influences. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. So you have information, but you have to parse out what's the information you're going to use and what are, what are you not going to use. Yeah. Um, so th th from the buying, I think the other, sorry. So the other way I think you can look at it is how did, how did the, the core of our business evolve? And I don't think it's massively different than what we started doing, which was always like, we want to represent brands that are, we think are cool, mm -hmm. cool people doing cool things. We want to make sure that like it has a place in, in, in our store and in our ethos, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it plays well with others. We don't want to obviously offer if, if we're, if we're trying to represent the best, we don't want 15 of the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, so that we can remain directional and focused Not and cannibalize. Mm -hmm. and, I, I think like the, the core ethos of the buying and that the, the business itself has not changed since the start. Like the things that me and Bob talked about then are things that we say now. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's really changed that much. I think the things that have changed, I would more describe as evolved. Yeah. I think that we've had to make a lot of change. We had to make, I mean, just think about a lot of changes from the beginning. Like, okay, so we have X, Y, and Z brand and we want to change that to, to have more of this perspective over the next year. So sure. for two seasons, you have to like slowly start to make that perspective change without abandoning your core customer. And then... From there, you have to like start to isolate like, okay, so that customer responded well to this, this, that, and the other, and now we got to figure out how I'm going to evolve them from there to there. So it's more like these like, it's like chess, you know, just mm -hmm. you're moving like, you're moving pieces with an end goal that you can't perfectly define. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think the way the business has evolved maybe the most is in like content and media, yeah. like find, like being super agile and being open to like, I mean, the YouTube was literally born out of a simple question when COVID first hit. And it was a question that was asked on day two of shutdown of how do we replicate the in-store experience online? Mm -hmm. And that was the closest way I could get people to experiencing the online 
I mean, the in-store experience online yeah, that I yeah. could think of that we could do quickly and we could figure out. Yeah. And it's, if you go way back, they're shot on my phone with, in a dark yeah. space because that's what we had access to yep. and we wanted to make sure it We'd was happening. We moved the couch out from the fitting room. And, and if you look at that from the beginning of that to where we're at now, I mean, I would argue that like one of the first videos we ever did was the FAQ. You and I sitting on a couch answering oh, yeah. FAQ questions yeah. in the dark, and I'd say that like, and that is an that is an old video. I mean, maybe it's not that many years back, but it's completely different. The story was completely different. We were completely different, and I would argue that like basically that was the beginning of the podcast because people liked that, and then mm-hmm. we did a few more. People liked that. We'd make them look a little better each time, mm-hmm. and then eventually it made sense that like, oh, cool. If that's something that people are asking for, the views are up on that. Like, I think that we can like we evolve can that into a and, podcast. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So all these things are just. We don't, the nice thing about being the size we are and the way, reason we try to keep it, even though like the, the business itself has grown a lot, we try to keep the team small is mm-hmm. because we don't sit over the, I think we talked about this on the podcast with Bob, we don't sit over the putt. Yeah. I mean, you know I mean, we just, we just, we take the putt and when we, and then if you miss it, fuck it, shoot it from the other side. You know what I mean? It's just like, just keep trying. Like we know what the goal is. Well, you know that if, if you, if you're like true North is like to service the customer and the customer's needs and desires and um, connecting with them on a deeper level than just buying clothes because that's what this should be, mm-hmm. uh, or what it should be, what makes a store like us special. Then it's an easy, it's an easy target. You know what I mean? Like you, you're just, you're just trying things to the best service the customer. You're never gonna piss the customer off trying to do a better job. You yeah. know what I mean? So it, it's that. It's not taking huge swings. It's taking constant swings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what I think that's. The evolution that's happened that's made it that that's the most different, honestly, from the beginning till now is that. It's the way we service the customer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think absolutely. that that's changed a ton and that's and the business has followed that. Um I don't know. I, I mean, sure the sure the buys have changed, so aesthetically it might look different, or aesthetically the pictures might look better because we got better equipment, we moved to a bigger space. Sure. We got bigger brands, we got smaller brands at the same time. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're you know. What I mean by that is you, the, over time, you do well enough or have enough exposure that you are able to get some more legacy brands that people are, you know, like, oh, wow, you're carrying X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, That's great. Mm-hmm. Or you have the ability and the voice to, like, represent smaller brands. You know what I mean? Because now, like, formerly, if we would have just opened and opened some small brand from Korea or something, people wouldn't, they wouldn't trust us. Yeah, like, what yeah. is that? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, because of, you know, our voice and our ability and our size and business evolving and growing, we're able to do that more and more, which is has always been another true north of the business of being able to, like, be, breaking small designers is why I got into this business. So sick. So, so sick. like, that's the most exciting thing that can happen. Shout it's out like, William Frederick. Sure. I mean, yeah, a friend of yours from Cleveland with a small brand that like hadn't done much in the way of like working with other stores or if any, none, had, had none. like that's, a, that's a huge deal. Cause like, that's something we think is awesome. Yeah. And we want, we want, and we understand that we need to earn the right to be like, yo, we put up for this thing. We think this is cool. Yeah. So like, you know, here it is. With all know? of our information and experience and this and that, yeah. we co-sign this and, yeah, and it's cool. People trust us. Yeah. I mean, I think that when I think about I'm not going to give away my five year plan, but I think one of it's like, I want canoe club to exist in two ways to the customers. One, we have an amazing curated buy of stuff that like both stuff that you're like, Holy shit. Like I I followed this brand forever. Like I love this stuff and Mm -hmm. and evolving with that brand to be able to produce collaborations and work together on special projects and do the, you know, evolve these like core big relationships to a place that really like gets to like further us and further the brand and like further the friendship and, uh, you know, business between each other and also being able to break tons of new awesome brands that you see all the time you just don't see anywhere because it's tough to carry those brands Mm -hmm. you know what I mean but like being able to like intro brands and do cool things for small designers and cool things with them and and, and grow them and give them the same attention that a brand like fucking you know La Mer or whatever would get it's the same it's the same thing um and treating it all the same And, and you know so that that that's being able to do all of that more is is my main so goal, fun, and yeah. I would do that until I died. So that's like first and foremost. Getting to do this podcast is fucking fun. So it's like yeah. the people that the fact that people listen to it and are excited about it and comment yeah. about it. That's so awesome because we Truly like doing amazing. it. Yeah. So I hope that can evolve because the more people that listen, the more cool people we get to interview. The more like leverage we get the more like adding stakes to a thing just makes it more fun you know what i mean it makes it more exciting and you know makes us have to be better mm-hmm. yeah um, feel more legitimate i think that like i want the other arm of this thing to be like half seen you said it the other day is like half seen as like a media company of like yeah wow it's like 
there's a podcast, there's all these videos, there's all this extra content, there's these blogs that we're like, you know, yeah. having a, other people help us out with so we can get more perspectives. Yeah, yeah, bringing and, our community in the yeah, fold. And building our community to a place where it's like this much bigger thing than mm-hmm. the store could have ever been on its own. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and which and gives some power back to the customer and like gives them a place to be beyond just click, click, click. That's my end of the relationship. Sure, so, yeah. All of it's just to keep building what we're doing now. I mean, that's 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 why I say I don't think that that much has changed. It's pretty much the same. It's just yeah, yeah. we've built it out more. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that that framework, all of those goals in my mind, maybe they're more esoteric, like get better brands or bigger, not better, bigger brands, or get uh, so that you can also validate getting smaller brands. Like yeah. maybe we only did that a little at the start, and now we're able to do it a lot. And maybe at the beginning, like we could have never imagined doing like all the video and podcast and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that was all just like, those are things that I don't see other stores doing that I think that we can do well because we have a good team that knows how to do all that Mm -hmm, stuff. And mm -hmm. and honestly, half this team, half the time, if we don't know how to do it, we figure it out. And then we always said like community was a true north. I think that's bigger and better than we ever thought it could be. And I think that like it's not, we haven't even scratched the surface. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited to keep like pushing on that and just like I, I have these like visions of what those things can be in five or ten years and how much bigger and more influential they can be. And I think as long as you're doing that with the idea that like it's to make a better not just store, it's a better place for people to be and exist yeah, in yeah, the world yeah. and to be a positive um place mm-hmm. um and lead from like without it being corny, but like lead from positivity and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. You know, like, like we've said before, you want to get kids out of our fucking discord, start, start talking shit. And I don't mean like, I mean, we can have fun on there, but as soon as you start being just negative to be negative, you're fucking out. We're not doing that shit. It's just yeah. like, it's just like hardcore shows, bro. Like first, first time someone starts hitting people for real, that, that guy's going to get thrown out by 10 dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And are you yeah. going to get your or back? Clapped, yeah. 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 It's just like, and that's the way it should be. Like we, th- this is a community of, of, of niche interest people who support like, it, it's it's just like that scene to me. It's like it supported the weirdos. Like this yeah. is the place where you're allowed to be and do whatever the fuck you want. Your whole ass and, self. And you can yeah. be your whole yeah. ass self. And I just see that like I hope that Canoe Club can be even more to people than it is now because in my mind it's not about anyone can sell clothes. Amazon sells clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like anybody, yeah. you, you can just, and, and, there, and if you're looking for ease of sale and the website to be perfect and no, no glitches, blah, 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 you can get that stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not hard. It's the fact that then it's over. I don't want it to be over then. I want you to go and I joined this and I joined that and they hit me up and we are, we, you know, I, I know the guys that own it and I know, yeah. you know, I want it to feel so much bigger and more inclusive and just something living. You know what I mean? I want it to be more of an organic living yeah. creature than, yeah. it, than it is even now. So speaking of community real fast, shout out little dibs in the discord. Me and oh, we got yes. a delivery from a Popeye magazine delivery. or something and it had the Japan Post bag. It was a big canvas bag. It was Long basically a mistake. Like, it was like, a mistake. We like, accidentally it, got it. They shoved a bunch of magazines in a bag, and I think the post office, when it got to the United States, was like, I don't think this is supposed to be in this bag, but They delivered it's it too that late. way. Yeah. Long story short, we sent the bag out to him. He broke it down to a pattern. He made me a vest, made Timothy a tote bag, wearing them, using them today. The stuff's, the stuff's just, great. It's just sick. Guy, it was a relationship amazing. formed yeah, through yeah, yeah, yeah. the store. Yeah, I mean, 100% through a community that we didn't know would if it would even be a thing when we mm-hmm, started it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. Like, that's what I mean is, like, when I think about the evolution in five years, I just hope we're still making big swings going, like, I don't know if this will work, but yeah, it we'll seems cool. Try you know it. what I mean? Like, yeah. we'll, see what, we'll see what it grows into. Um, but, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I don't, without even being, like, lofty, that's, it's, it's, I don't know that it's changed that much. I, I don't, like, every, all the drive is the exact same from the start. Yep. It's this, and it's the same. <laughs> It's because I think if you start the business and you and you fill it with people that all understand your vision, then it becomes everyone's vision. And it's so much it's the, in the same way that I mean that the community will grow and people's people will love Canoe Club the way I love Canoe Club. Then it's bigger than me. It's the same thing now where we've got 10 employees or whatever, 12 and whatever it is. Um, they all care about the store the way we care about the store. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. like that's like a big part of joining our yeah. team. That's why we're so picky. And it's because I it's not whether you went to FIT or something, it's like, it's like, do you get what we're doing and want to make things better? Mm-hmm. You wake up every single morning and go, I want to make the business better. That's, yeah, a, that's yeah. the thing Bob always said. It was just like, that. that's the, that's, that's what, that's what is, that's why it's bigger than just selling clothes. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because everyone here feels the same about no, it. Agreed. So, agreed. I don't know exactly what, if that answered the question. I think but, it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's do a hot take because we, we got a guest coming in real soon and we both, I'm sure, yeah. have to pee. 
Um, yeah, I've been drinking coffee, boy. Here we go. Oh, this one's easy. Uh, you can only do one forever, shower or bath? Shower. Yeah, I mean, I want to... Gr- I, I love showers. It, I understand the water consumption issue, but I, I, I try to do one at the gym, and I do one at night before I get in bed a lot of the times. I love showering Is more than Is showering anything. more wasteful than a bath? I, I have no idea. Huh. I think it's all bad, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, I, I love... There's nothing I look forward to more than showering. I love showering. Really? I feel amazing. I, I feel clean. I feel reset. I feel like it was like a thing... I don't know. It's just like that's how I know how to deal with problems. I'll take a hot shower about things all the time. And it does. It just, I don't know if it's like it resets a temperature thing in you that just changes Mm, your mind. But if I like, if I'm sore, if I'm feeling achy, if I'm feeling sick, if I feel just, you know, depressed or, you know, whatever it is, for some reason, that really fucking resets me in a way that maybe it only resets me like 4%, but it's, it's a, it's enough. I, I, I push myself over the edge with it constantly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I would do shower, no doubt. One, because I'm not going to wait for the bath to fill up. And then all Now, here's the thing. You, if you have to have a, a bath bath. Yeah. Like it, but it, but but when you are at a, like a hotel and you got the big bath, yeah, or if you've got the luxury of the big bath yeah, at home, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the one where your feet hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would I do that my feet all day, out, every day. Like it really, like that's one where I like to do is I like to get it so hot where you have to go in like you have to inch in, and Ooh. by the time you get out, dude, I want to feel like a wet noodle. I want to yeah. feel like I need to like I'm getting over something or Ugh. I like did drugs. That's I want to feel crazy. That's scary. It puts me in a fright. No, when all the water's it's doing too is hot. just it's just relaxing your muscles. You know what I mean? Like yeah. your muscles are tense all day long. You get that you get that jello feeling. You're not a a shower sitter, are you? Like me? No. No, nothing better. I, I hear no, you. No, I'm not a heroin uh, addict in a, in a <laughs> '90s movie, <laughs> dude. I, I right, like. I'll tell you right now. I'm. I really. Uh, I shower at nighttime sometimes, but I like to. Uh, if I have the time in the morning, same thing. I agree. There is something meditative about it. Uh, there's nothing I like more than I have it down to where like. I just moved into the new crib, so I got to figure out uh, to get the muscle memory right. But like, I can like adjust the water with my feet. I'll lay and just like have my mm-hmm. feet on the wall, and I'll just sit there and. You just you're just what, being there for a minute. The real dream I have is like sauna hot tub situation. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's the real boom, boom, boom. situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I mean I get the sauna at the gym, but the hot tub is like really like that's one where I can really like here's what I like. You can't have your phone in there. Yeah. You can't have AirPods on. Yeah. You can't have like anything that would like connect you to yeah, the bigger yeah. it's a it, and I like being connected, but like it is a way to like I have Probably my best business thoughts all happen in the shower. No, I agree. I agree. Because uh, it's like it's like where I can let myself spiral, but for some reason in the shower, I don't let myself, I don't freak myself out. You can just work through the problem, mm-hmm. reach some sort of resolve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To be honest, if I really felt like I needed to solve a problem, like I was really having a, troubles with it, I'd take 30 minute shower. I, I come out of there with an answer yeah. or at least yeah, some yeah. options. Or at least uh, what you're going to yeah. do next. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure, sure. So I don't know. I, I guess I don't really, if, if I had to choose one forever and always, Hot shower. Yeah. If I had the optimized, like, big bath, hot, big water, no issues with whatever, you know, carbon footprint issue sure. this is, yeah. um, maybe it would be bath. So yeah. I, I, it kind of depends. But yeah. I would take a bad shower. No, that's not true. I would take a bad shower over a bad bath. Yeah, no doubt. But a bad bath, you're sitting in some filth, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not any good. I'm really, when I think about this, I'm more thinking about, I showered at the gym in the morning before I came into work, and then I do like an, if I have the if I have the luxurious bathtub, I'm just doing that one. That one's more. That one's for me. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. different. That's not about getting clean. It's about feeling good. Yeah, you know, I feel. Yeah, you. yeah. Okay. Well, we have a fun interview coming up, so we got to get off and and uh, and do that. But yeah, but yeah, it was a you know yeah, this was a good one. I think we yeah. covered a lot of ground with only a few questions. We talked a lot. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else.